Hi, my name is Joy Ebenedike, and you're welcome to Joy Ebenedike's journal. We're still walking through the story of creation and God's benevolence to man. Our conversation today is on the topic, God's plan to save man. You know, even in driving Adam and Eve from his presence, God's love for man was still manifest. Because he killed an animal and covered their nakedness with the skin of the animal. Just imagine, all the while they had been naked, they didn't realize they were naked, so there was no need to cover their nakedness. But as soon as they lost the consciousness of innocence and realized they were naked, God came down to their level and covered their nakedness. What a loving God. What a loving God that we serve. And you know, this killing of an animal marked the institution of the shedding of blood for the atonement of sin. So immediately he drove Adam and Eve out of his presence, God commenced the plan to restore man's relationship with himself. This plan that took so many years to be fulfilled. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, God revealed his plan for saving man when he said to Satan, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Satan's offspring, referred to here, is the kingdom of darkness. The woman's offspring is Christ, because the woman gave birth to him without the impute of man. The heel of the seed of the woman is the church, because we are the body of Christ, while Christ is the head. The Lord declared that Satan will attack and persecute the church, but that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of Satan. And through the ages, Satan has continued to attack and to persecute the church and the body of Christ. The history of the Jewish nation is really a story of Satan's concerted efforts to thwart God's plan of sending a redeemer to deliver his people. Satan tried everything possible to destroy the line through which God prophesied the Redeemer was going to come from. And this was the line of Abraham and David. And you know, because the people were spiritually dead and alienated from God, they ignorantly aligned themselves with Satan to thwart God's plan of redemption. But of course, God's declaration came to pass. It came to pass when Christ took the punishment for the sin of man. When Christ bruised the head of Satan by breaking the lordship of Satan over all who were bondage to him. And God's plan of redemption was manifested through various covenants that he made with his people in the Old Testament and the new covenant in the New Testament. Under the Abrahamic covenant found in Genesis chapter 12, which I would expect you to read, God asked Abraham to leave his people and to move to a land that he would show him. God made two promises to Abraham. He promised Abraham that he would bless him and make his name great. And that he will bless the people of the world through Abraham. That he will make Abraham into a great nation. And God later renewed the covenant he made with Abraham with Isaac and Jacob, his sons. Of course, you know that Isaac was Abraham's son and Jacob was Isaac's son. The significance of God's covenant with Abraham and his descendants was to establish them as his people through whom 
he was going to send a redeemer. And for 400 years, the descendants of Jacob were slaves in Egypt. And this promise to Abraham as, and his descendants seemed buried. But then after 400 years, God delivered his people from bondage in Egypt. And at Mount Sinai, he made another covenant with Israel to confirm the covenant he had made with Abraham. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and on the notification bell to get notifications whenever I upload a new video. Follow me on Facebook at Joy Benedicke's Shelf and on my blog at blog.joybenedicke.com. And of course, do share my video with your contacts. Never forget that you are the object of God's love and affection. God bless you. See you next time.